Addressing many of today's complex issues requires involving all sectors, government, businesses, nonprofits, and citizens. Oregon Solutions, located at Portland State University, provides a structure and a process for this kind of collaboration. One Oregon Solutions project was the construction of a trail commemorating the site where Lewis and Clark spent the winter of 1805 to 1806. The proposed six-mile trail led from Fort Clatsop to the Pacific Ocean. Numerous government agencies, as well as private companies and nonprofit organizations, needed to come together to make the Fort Clatsop to the Sea Trail a reality. Construction of the trail entailed obtaining land and permission from multiple owners, including private companies and federal, state, and county government. It required building an underpass below a major highway and obtaining permits to cross wetlands, all in a compressed period of time. The governor of Oregon appointed Senator Betsy Johnson as convener of this group to determine the trail's design and secure resources for its construction. Senator Johnson helped 37 stakeholders work out agreements about how to implement the project. On the Fort to the Sea Trail, the thing that surprised me was the enthusiasm. It was an infectious enthusiasm. People came perhaps seeing a sense of we can't get there from here and as the process unfolded, everyone's ownership, their sense of participation in, of, in something important, uh, their empowerment, uh, and at the end their just overt enthusiasm was what really surprised me. I had the joy of sitting watching all of these engineering firms actually assist each other when they would be fierce competitors in another world. Somebody would say, gee, we need the geotechnical piece for this section of land, and somebody else would say, well, we did that when we did a certain project. I've got the stuff back in my office. I'll email it to you. Um, it, not only did they do it in a sense of collegial cooperation to help move the project forward, but by the time we were done, we had close to half a million dollars on the table of offered services. Um, that was dazzling. What does a convener do? And so the role of convener is to, to bring people into a neutral forum with a sense of possibility and um, uh, to be sort of the cheerleader at times, to uh, have the opportunity to interact with the professional staff that helps the Oregon solution process, and in no small measure to get out of the way once it starts and the excitement starts to build in finding solutions. Um, the convener, I think, needs to judge that, that difference between active and passive participation. The convener comes as, as an equal with the others at the table. What does a convener need? First, you need a neutral forum. And you need, uh, in the case of Oregon Solutions, being housed inside a prestigious university provides that neutral forum where no one feels as though uh, there's a leg up by who calls people together. Having an academic institution play th that role, I think, is ideal. And then secondly, you need very skillful staff, staff that maintain their sense of neutrality. They sit at the table all the time, and I think it would be quite easy for them to assume activists or even advocacy roles. But the mark of really superior staff is the ability to capture the thoughts of everyone else and be honest reporters of what went on without trying to influence the outcome one way or another. What do you achieve with a collaborative process? I think that it's, it's a whole new way of looking at identifying problems, because that's part of the process, identifying the problems, bringing the right people to the table, um, creating a sense of ownership in the outcome, and then executing on the outcome. And when you are bringing together sectors that don't always talk to each other, the private entrepreneurial sector, government, um, the charitable sector often is involved in Oregon Solutions process where they can bring their resources as well as their expertise to the table. Um, it's a chance to, to build some relationships that I think for many legislators will have enduring value. There is some political risk, risk in taking on really um, significant problems with entrenched points of view about what the solution could or should be. I would say don't be afraid. This is a wonderful process. It is one of the most satisfying exercises yielding tangible, lasting results. What impact has this experience had on you as a legislator? It has radically changed the way that I approach my job at the legislature. I think the experience that I've had in Oregon Solutions has just galvanized in my mind that the best solutions are the ones where you get everyone who has an interest at the table. 
and that you particularly reach out to the people who might not come with your same perspective on uh, what a solution would look like. Um, even today, uh, I met with some colleagues, different political party, different side of the building. I'm in the Senate, they're in the House, and we were figuring out how we could come together to try to address each other's um, menu of interest and see if we could find common ground. Right now, um, the people that wear the same political jersey as I do control both the House and the Senate and the governor's office. And it would be very easy to do things by just force of political majority. But instead, I think the much better solutions come out of a collaborative process where everybody pushes away from the table feeling ownership. The Oregon Solutions Fort to Sea Trail project leveraged $3.2 million through public and private investments. Because of the efforts of the project convener, Senator Betsy Johnson, and the many groups who collaborated to create the trail, thousands of hikers a year now have the opportunity to experience this part of the land that Lewis and Clark explored.